Michael Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on! As defined in the American Heritage What's Dictionary, up, everyone? How you edition, doing? the noun rock is defined oh, yeah. as a Mother's relatively like a hard, naturally occurring today, material baby. of mineral origin. A naturally formed mineral rock. That's not rock. This is rock. Play with the devil, die with the devil. No. Oh, yeah, baby. Play with the devil, die with the devil. That is our new promo happening over on the evening show starting September 1st. And that one, boy, ho, ho, Hollywood Unleashed, baby. Hollywood Unleashed. It's going to be over on Spotify. I, uh, what is that? Apple Podcasts, that whole nine yards, man. We're on every major radio platform. Uh, that's our stronghold, man. I love it over there. Anyway, how's everybody doing today? Doing good, I hope. It is the weekend, and we're going to get this show started on one of them hmm notes. Yes, hmm. You know, I actually, it was funny. I got a lot of feedback from uh, the segment I did about uh, COs and one percenter clubs. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Had a lot of haters, but I appreciate it. It happens. It happens. If they cannot, uh, you know, expand their mind or understand the purpose behind it, then that's on them. What can I tell you? Uh, anyway, did you see that stuff happening out in D.C. yesterday? My God, after uh, he accepted his uh, speech, next thing you know, all the hoodlums, man, out there attacking everybody. Oh, it's peaceful protest. Yeah, peaceful protest, my ass. And we're going to be covering a story today that's going to throw you into a frenzy. They are saying the main problems out of all this stuff is the militias. Yes, the militias. Now they are crying foul after they're attacking people. Did you see that one scene in D.C. where they were trying to make people give the hand or the fist, whatever it is, these little white liberal uh, brats? There was actually one person that refused to do it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But now they're on the militias, but even worse, they're attacking bikers everywhere, man everywhere see you got that bikers for trump stuff and a lot of us ain't a part of that st and they don't know the difference so they're equating them to all bikers and the president said yeah i got the bikers which hey you know if you ever look at my comments yeah we got a lot of bikers for you know that like, like trump you know what's not the like you know i do get my liberal haters and stuff but hey it's my show my opinion you got your opinion but now they're lumping bikers in with militias. Yes, that's what they're doing. They're saying that we're part of the problem, that we're the bullies. You know, I never understood that. Why does adults use bully? Are we like in freaking grade school or something? Are we in high school where you got to call somebody a bully? Really? You know, this whole generation's very sad, man. Th sad state of affairs with our generation. Can you imagine if you put these kids that are right now 18 and up, you know, 18 to maybe 30, and it was World War II? We would have lost. They'd have been in the corner whining. They would have never measured up to the greatest generation. That's how soft and how weak these kids were raised. Now, you know, I'm not talking about all of them because we got some youngins that uh, watch the show and they're hardcore riders, man. They love the, the lifestyle. They get out there, they represent, they don't cry, but a majority of that age group, you're nothing but wussies. Nothing but wussies. And do you notice that these are the wussies that have taken over this movement, I guess. It's all freaking little... It's all white kids. What's wrong with you? 
they're embarrassed to be a white boy. And everybody knows I'm not, you know, I get called racist on a daily basis now since this all started because, hey, I'm giving my point of view. Too bad, you know, this country can't debate like it used to be. Me and BD debate all the time and we don't get mad at each other. That's the way it's supposed to be. But nope, not in these days. So now it's bikers and the militia groups that are right wing that are causing all the problems. Do you see how the media is spinning this crap? And people actually listen to it. Actually listen to it. I don't know about you, but bikers are hardworking men and women that go to work every day, try to do good for their kids or their grandbabies, and just want to live life and be free. You don't see them burning down buildings. Quite opposite. You have a lot of bikers standing behind Leo right now, which I never thought it would happen, but, you know, it, it happens. You know, the things get a little, you know, weird out there. You know, but to each his own. The biker thing has changed over time. It's no longer, you know, grindy and all that type of stuff uh, like it used to be. Now it's, you know, mainstream, I guess you would say. That was the same thing with tattoos. When I started tattooing, it was nothing, nothing but bikers, guys out of the joint, military. That, that was our client base. And then over time, you know, early 2000s, it started changing. Then we started to get lawyers, doctors, these corporate businessmen coming in and wanting tattoos. And it used to mind bog me, man. Because what I used to, when I owned my shops, what I used to do is I would set up a tattoo shop in a location I know is going to have a lot of freaking movement to it. Build up the clientele, turn around, flip it. And then I'd go on to the next one and then the next one and stuff like that. You know, usually I would sell it to uh, an apprentice or something and they would carry it on. But it would be theirs because they bought it. But I was just flabbergasted how everything changed. You know, you had freaking doctors coming up getting full sleeve tattoos. So that's kind of what, you know, happened in the biker community. It evolved, I guess you can say. It went from knockdown, drag out, bar fights, uh, living life hardcore, going out there, doing a couple lines, smoking up your 420, getting drunk as a freaking, uh, you know, redheaded stepchild, and it was nothing but a party, man, out there freaking laying next to a nice honey, to Harley Davidson making up the hog chapters. You get in a whole different uh, society in there. Like I saw, we say there's different sets within the biker community. So, you know, your rubs started to outweigh the hardcores. You can see it actually on YouTube. You can see it on uh, a lot of the social media platforms. The uh, creators that have the most subscribers, I'm talking over 100,000, you know, by the way, thanks, Facebook. Uh, we got, what is it, 75,800 followers over there. Uh, we're working on our Instagram stuff. I finally figured out Instagram. You guys believe that? I still haven't figured out how to do messaging, but I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. Give me a break. Uh, but those type of creators that are doing nothing but moto vlogging, they're doing uh, product uh, unveils, or they're doing demos, those are the ones that really got it going on as far as, you know, as far as a following on YouTube, uh, the video wise. The ones that do stuff like uh, clubs, biker news, uh, protocol. Yeah, you got a lot out there that does a lot on YouTube, but you don't see it as much on Facebook or the other social media platforms. Because that's not the type of people anymore that are the majority in the scene. Most people are independent. 
You know, it used to be, hey, let's get a part of a club. And yeah, I know there's a lot of pop-up clubs and stuff. You know what? Really not as much anymore. I think that, you know, trend died down. But yeah, there is some. But most people like riding with their buddies, going to the rallies. And they love watching the moto vlog stuff. They love talking about the bikes. See, that's my favorite thing is talking about bikes. I love talking about Harleys. I love talking about the other manufacturers. But because I'm in Biker News, maybe I should do a, uh, a separate channel or something like that or a separate program talking about the bikes. Uh, because that's really what I really like is hearing about bikes. So, you know, yeah. You're not going to get as much, how can I say it? You're not going to get as many subscribers from doing what we do, but that just shows you how the scene in general has changed. They don't want the problems that come along, well, like now. Look at how the media is handling this whole thing with bikers. I can guarantee you most bikers don't even want to be involved in that crap. Yeah, they stand strong for our country and, and stuff, but they're not going out there with rifles and all that stuff. Now, me, I'm a big supporter of Lindenhouse, man. The kid from Illinois that went up there, did, you know what? They attacked that kid, and they got what was coming to him. You know, I was talking to some people. They didn't even know the one guy had a freaking gun, a pistol, a nine. That's because they let the media pull on the pecker. And they don't want to research. Don't want to research. Terrible state of affairs this is. Because people are not educated. And that is what gives the general public is these kind of publications, these kind of stories that I'm going to go over, the bad vibe toward bikers. And it's really important for the general public to know, hey, wait a second here. Bikers do a lot and i mean a damn lot for the community they raise tons of money for good causes what so an incident uh you like at that sturgis thing and by the way that doge jackasses started it up in sturgis man dude with the purple hair you know the freaking unicorn as i call him he hey he went to swipe at a biker hey he's lucky he didn't get beat down Hardcore. Which I believe he should have, but, uh, you know, that's besides the point. Another, you know, different subject. But, hey, it was all over the news. Just like the rally, you know, we're going to be covering one. Now they're saying, well, we have 20 cases of this, 20 cases of that. It's all the biker's fault. But I guess it didn't matter that there was a march in D.C. And, boy, was that a joke. Uh, Sharpton, that guy's, you know what, you do know he's a rat, you can look this up. He's a big time rat. And I can't see how anybody follows that guy, but anyway. They didn't have any mask on, hardly any of them did. But you can bash on the other side. If you're gonna put out a story, put out both sides of the story, but that ain't the media no more. I don't know who the hell trains these so-called reporters. That's why I love citizen reporters. The, like I said on the other segment, the reason why I like doing biker news is, is the clubs have an opportunity and bikers have an opportunity, whoever's in a story, to come on and tell their side. God knows we got more numbers than uh, most of these uh, so-called journalists do. So-called journalists, they hardly got anybody. Uh, but we reach all over all kinds of platforms, and that is why you're seeing a lot of stifling happening to third-party creators, is the MSM, mainstream media, is starting to bitch now. Hey, wait a second, they got more people than us. You know, right-side broadcasting, you know, they covered the guy, uh, the president, a lot. They get three, four times the numbers... Then CBS, ABC, and then CNN put together. People are going to that third party because people want to see the truth. They want to see both sides. 
They didn't do that with Rittenhouse, man. Yeah, he's probably going to face some charges because he was only 17, had the AR. But as far as Homicide 1, you you know what? You're, you're out of your mind. Out of your mind to think that. Unreal. But that's the country we live in. And that's why bikers need to actually start fighting back, man, in the public sphere. They need to get their story out. Because God knows the mainstream media ain't going to put it out. The mainstream media is too busy turning everybody against bikers. Oh, look at them doing this. Look at them doing that. They had 460,000 people show up in the middle of a pandemic at a rally. Oh, this shouldn't have happened. I don't see him saying that about this freaking march in uh, Washington, D.C. today. Hell no. It don't fit their narrative. It's all about their narrative now. Sad stuff, man. Sad state of affairs. But we're going to go into biker news right now. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the monologue. Don't forget to pow rock on. Also, visit us over on Spotify, iTunes, and all our major platforms. Go hit that follow button over on Instagram, man. But let's get to the biker news right now. Article. At the bottom, it says, Tough Times, Tough Reporters, Join Alternet 2020. And then it goes, you know, they're claiming to be Tough Times, Tough Reporters, shot to support progressive journalism. How is that tougher reporters? I just wanted to start out like that. Because these are the same people that refuse to put both sides of the story out. Both sides. That is true journalism. Not putting in your opinions. Not saying you're right. But both sides of the story. Watch out for the paramilitaries. This disturbing prediction about Trump's presidency appears to be coming true. Now, they're covering the story of Rittenhouse, you know, the brave kid, pound free Rittenhouse. But they're not covering all the other riots. They don't do that. Anyway, by Travis Geddes, Pecker Puller, one of the more pessimistic, pessimistic warnings about a Donald Trump presidency appears to be coming true. Right-wing militias, which they are now putting bikers in. Now bikers are right-wing. Are walking out of the anti-government shadows and standing side-by-side side with law enforcement and sometimes Republican Party officials to counter demonstrations against racist police brutality. There you got it. Their favorite word, baby. Racist. That's their favorite word. You gotta love the little kids. They can't come up with an argument. So, everybody's a racist against racist police brutality. I can't believe it. I'm gonna say this. Floyd, he had enough fentanyl in his system, he was going to be dead by that night. He was already, you know, if you've seen the full video, it says, I can't breathe while you're sitting in the car. Can't breathe. Nope. The autopsies that they did, and we read some of the autopsies, it didn't say nothing about asphyxiation in there. Well, you know, the ones that were hired by the family did. And this incident right now, you had a sex offender. The guy was a sex offender. He had a knife. He went to pull out a knife. He was told many times to put the knife down. Witnesses heard it and are talking about it. So he got shot. But hey, you know what? A sex offender, I don't care what happens to you. Uh, an overnight shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin left two people dead and a third wounded. During a co and this is how they're putting, you know, the story out. During a confrontation between militia members guarding a gas station and demonstrators protesting the police 
shooting of 29-year-old Jacob Blake, you know, sex offender. No arrests have been made in the case since this article, which was a day or two old. Uh, they have arrested him, but video shows a man armed with a rifle, open fire, and then calmly walk towards police officers who have been ordering the crowd to disperse, while another video shows officers giving the gunman water shortly before shooting the shooting and thanks for him coming. Oh, really? Hmm. Then everybody's seen the footage. I'm not going to go to that. Armed anti-government groups. What do you think are you? What do you think them in Portland are? What do you think them runs in Kenosha are? But it don't fit your narrative. Have faced existential tension after Trump's election, but they resolved the dilemma by forming a counter resistance to demonstrations against the president and law enforcement and also by providing security to Republican groups. That's exactly the scenario that Timothy Snyder, a Yale history uh, a historian, warned against after the election. Yeah, we're going to believe anything coming out of Yale. Watch out for the paramilitaries. When the men with guns who always claim to be against the system start wearing uniforms and marching around with torches and pitchers, of a leader, the end is nigh. All I can say is the old saying, you drew first blood. When the pro-leader uh, paramilitary and the official police and military in Domingo, he added, the game is over. The trace found just over three years ago at least five instances in Michigan, Oregon, and Texas where anti-government gun groups have aligned themselves with conservative elected officials and GOP causes. What do you call them, Portland, right now? Oh, that's right! You guys are too chicken shit to stop them! That's your voting base! God forbid! Some of the early incident, here comes the main part to tie the bikers into it. Some of the earliest violence to erupt as part of those sustained demonstration was allegedly touched off by a member of the Hells Angels biker gang who, quote, wanted to sow discord and racial unrest by breaking out the windows and writing what he did on the double red doors. I still don't believe the guy was an angel. I think it was an Aryan cowboy, but... They're starting to group bikers in with these militias. However, the so-called umbrella man still hasn't been arrested nearly a month after a tipster revealed his identity to police. Because they can't prove it. They can't prove it was him. He had a, you couldn't see who he is. Now, white supremacists posing as Black Lives Matter protesters also instigated riots oh it was these far rights it had nothing to do with these lefties nothing to do poor lefties the right is bullying them six people were arrested in connection with violence and uh, thing now oregon now they're gonna blame oregon on right wingers stood by over the weekend as white ring uh, protesters brandished handguns and other weapons against left-wing demonstrators. You're kidding me, right? There's been 80-something days straight of riots, and uh, it ain't by the right. And a video from early June appears to show Salem officers advising militia group members how to avoid curfew violations. Okay, anyway. Then they talk about uh, railing against uh, coronavirus restrictions, all that stuff. Uh, then how you send federal agents in. But you see how they're tying, uh, tying bikers with starting everything? That is a progressive for you. They got no lives. All they are is East and West Coast elites. They live in this little freaking bubble. And now they're freaking out uh, over the poll numbers, you jackasses. Anyway, I'm going to go to Corey Grass Wall of Shame before I get into any other uh, news stories, because I know you guys have been loving that. Uh, police officer arrested for drug po uh, possession.
Let's take a listen to this one, huh? Customs. Playing after Texas State, 37 years after a sub Signed to You know what? Leave her alone, man. You know, I got to disagree with this one. It's cannabis. Leave it alone. Uh, anyway, the officer is 37 year old uh, Karina Padilla. She was assigned to the. Uh, Port of entry. She was arrested by Texas Department of Public Safety uh, special agents for possession of marijuana, less than two ounces, and possession of a controlled substance over four grams, but less than 400, less than a pound. Uh, they executed a search warrant on her home in Horizon City. The search turned up the containers of a bag of cannabis. It's time to legalize. Now, Let's go over to this one. Ooh, ouch. Off-duty Norfolk police officer arrested and charged in death of Chesapeake man. We begin with breaking news. An off-duty Norfolk police officer arrested and charged in the death of a Chesapeake man. This stems back to an investigation that started in January. The day Edmund Hoyt turned himself in to Chesapeake police. Allison Basil is live outside the Chesapeake City Jail with details, Allison. Yes, Chesapeake police tell us 34 year old Edmund Hoyt turned himself in here to the Chesapeake City Jail today after police served him with a warrant for voluntary manslaughter. Now, police say this stems this arrest stems from a shooting on January 19th. This is video of Bainbridge Boulevard in Chesapeake where it happened. Investigators say Hoyt, an off duty Norfolk police officer, was called to the area by a family member who told him 43 year old Kelvin White was threatening them with a weapon. Police say Hoyt confronted White when he arrived. They started to fight and Hoyt shot White. They say both men had guns during the incident. White died at the hospital shortly after. We spoke with White's family back in January. They said he left behind three children. And again, police tell us Hoyt was an off-duty officer at the time and he was not in uniform. He is currently in jail without bond. Live in Chesapeake, Allison Basil, 13 News. There you go. You're looking at uh, Edmund Hoyt is now part of the wall of shame. Now let's go to DT or Delco Times by Alex Rose. Two women charged with a straw buy of a firearm. Uh, two women affiliated with the Wheels of Soul Motorcycle Club have been charged with the illegal purchase and transfer of firearms following an investigation into a report of a gunshot victim in Fullcroft. Police Chief Bill Baer and District Attorney Jake uh, announced Thursday, quote, there are 1,500 gun deaths in Pennsylvania per year. Oh, that's just a weekend here in Chicago. Don't make it so big. And this epidemic is fueled in part by straw purchasing. Oh, that's a Democrat freaking talking point right now. A straw purchase is when one individual purchases a firearm for someone who is, Ill, or who is legally prohibited from buying one. It is important for all Delaware County residents to know that straw purchasing is a serious crime with serious consequences and puts us all in danger. I don't know, man. Leo with their guns. I don't know. Bullcrap uh, police officer Tom Kesner responded to a report of a gunshot victim on the first block of King Avenue, according to the release. The victim was identified as borough resident Gaynell Noel Warren, 31. Uh, he allegedly got into an altercation with another woman and drew a gun only to shoot herself in the foot. <laughs> That's something out of a movie. That's kind of funny. A search warrant was obtained and a gun case was allegedly recovered from No Warren's residence. Uh, the gun case had a serial number which was traced to a gun purchased by Leslie Ford, 26, of Philadelphia in May 2020 from Target Master Gun Store in Chad's Ford. According to the release, further investigation revealed that the gun had been reported stolen out of Philadelphia, the release states. 
Ford allegedly admitted in an interview what she completed the paperwork to purchase the gun and then gave it to Noel for a hundred bucks. Man, what the hell is wrong with you, a hundred bucks? Noel Warren is convicted felon who is prohibited from purchasing a or and possessing a firearm. The release knows both women are affiliated with the Wheels of Soul Motorcycle Club, which is considered an outlaw motorcycle club by law enforcement. Uh, she's charged with the illegal transfer of firearms and providing false information. That's why when you're in the interview room, name, date of birth, and I want my attorney. Anyway. charged with illegal possession of firearms and reckless endangerment both women are also charged with multiple conspiracy counts <laughs> i have to throw that in there man uh they're being arranged before uh district judge uh, robert diaz agostino uh that from the wheels of so now good news show me the wind in your hair missouri's helmet law mostly disappears and that's been a long time coming, baby. Uh, Missouri lawmakers vote to repeal helmet law. Let's listen. This is Biker Dad's uh, gig. Uh, anytime now, Chris. <laughs> anyway, if it starts, it starts. Uh, Missouri helmet law repeal goes into effect Friday. Republican Governor Mike Parson signed a bill into law earlier this year. It will waive the requirement that all motorcyclists wear helmets. The new law takes effect the 28th, which is today, and will exempt motorcycle riders who are at least 26 years old. Riders who choose not to wear a helmet will need health uh, insurance coverage. The change doesn't apply to riders with instructional permits. Uh, again, this is, uh, from Biker Dad. Hey, man, you gotta get that fixed, man, with your stuff. Uh, again, let's go to WKRG. Again, another Biker Dad, uh, one. Let's see if, uh, it pops up here. This is by CBS News. For Pat. about 80 years, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in South Dakota has been wildly popular. Oh, we're really excited. This is our 18th year coming. Yeah. Number 18 for us. Yeah. We don't miss it. We come every year. About 500,000 people showed up last year. Despite fear that it will be a super spreader for coronavirus this year, some 250,000 are expected to pack the small town of Sturgis when the rally gets underway this week. Not stop people from coming. South Dakota's been Why do police. they do that stuff, man? That's an old video, man. I just noticed that. Uh, the state of Colorado is reporting more than 20 cases of coronavirus linked to people who attended the week-and-a-half-long annual motorcycle event in Sturges, the virus was expected to cut attendance by nearly half, but the final count put attendance for Sturges at 462,000, only down 7.5. They came by the thousands, make that hundreds of thousands, uh, according to South Dakota authorities. Uh, the state of Colorado is now asking those who attended the rally and have uh, coronavirus symptoms to be tested immediately, those without symptoms should be tested seven days after any suspected exposure. Again, are you going to ask that of the, all these dudes marching in Washington right now? So, after the break, let's go to my final thought. It's going to be a good one, baby. Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, we are back, man, for my final thoughts. Don't forget, we got that other show coming up over on iTunes and Spotify starting the 1st of September, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You're getting a little taste of how it's going to be going. So, how do you like how the progressives report on all the riots happening and how it's all militias and it was a biker that started all the riots in Minneapolis. God forbid that they take any responsibility. See, they are famous for projecting. 
You know what projection is? When you do something, you try to blame other people. So their whole campaign slogan is, you're racist, America's racist. I don't think it's going to play out too good. I think people are waking up to what's happening. But that is what they're trying to tie bikers to. And it's very important, like I said earlier, that bikers make sure to get out the good that we do. The good that we do. There's a lot of fundraisers that happen all over the place, all over this country, every single year, every single weekend. There has to be millions that are raised by bikers for the local community. And many of the clubs are involved. One percenter clubs too. But they're never ever going to get noticed. It would be interesting to see, and this is just speculation, if Leo ever repays the favor for some of these bikers sticking up for him. It would be interesting to see if profiling goes up or down. One thing's for sure, and it's regrettable, the issue of motorcycle club profiling is take a, taking a back burner to what's going on in this country right now. There was so much advancement, uh, so much progress on that front through guys like Double D uh, at the Motorcycle Profiling Project, from NCOM, from ABATE. Now it's like at a standstill, you know, because of the coronavirus and because of uh, what's going on with all these uh, lefty uh, pecker pullers out there causing all kinds of problems, acting like a bunch of school kids. It was funny, I seen a bunch of them uh, laying in the street on a news article. All I had to think was, damn, man, you're acting like my freaking five-year-old grandkid. All there pouting and stuff, laying on the ground, shaking and all that stuff. It's like, man, don't you got any dignity? Any of you people have any of that, man. How do you even look at yourself in the mirror? Oh, we're fighting for justice. Man, you're fighting for something because you're freaking ashamed of being the color you are. You cannot compare what's happening today with what happened in MLK's time. You can't do it, man. Unreal, but the media is never going to cover that. And because Trump said bikers are on my side, the bikers for Trump stuff always at the rallies. And boy, some of them do get down, man. They get down with the boys, you know, the Proud Boys. I seen them in Portland wearing the shirts, which, hey, that's pretty cool. Even though I don't uh, support Chris Cox and how he got involved, you know, the guy didn't even have a freaking motorcycle when he started the freaking group. He came the national prominence when he there was a government shutdown and he was picking up trash. He was never a biker at that point, but he used the lifestyle to freaking steamroll his way up to the top. And, you know, he's by the president all the damn time. What I don't like about him is not only how he got involved, but now that you're claiming a biker and you got the president's ear... Why are you not helping us out on profiling? Again, it don't fit what you want to do. Just because you stand behind law enforcement doesn't mean you can't stand behind the community you claim to be with. Profiling is very, very real. And for somebody like you to have the president's ear, you can't say, hey, you know, the biker community done so much for me. Bought you a bike, bought you that nice old trailer that you, you know, take around the country. You can't give a little back to us. That right there is a pecker puller move. Sad state of affairs when people take advantage of uh, the lifestyle. You know, that, one thing that, that's funny and I got to talk out for the creators. Oh, you guys are using this to make money. How much money do you guys really think we make doing this? You don't make any money until you got like 3 million freaking subscribers on YouTube. On the radio, it's even harder. You guys think we're freaking making millions here. 
we're lucky to be able to cover the expenses of what we put out. But hey, you guys are using it to make money. No, like I've explained, I only do it because I want the community to be informed. Because if I was in this for money, I'd be sleeping on the street right now. So you didn't get that out of your heads. That's where me and the other creators differ from Chris Cox. But it's interesting how they brought up the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. They are trying to pin this on the HA. And I can't believe it. Maybe the HA needs to get a freaking attorney and say, Hey man, this wasn't us, but you're blaming us for the riots. Now you're defacing our name. Go out and sue the piss out of them. <laughs> Throw it right back in their face, I say. You know... And the reason why Umbrella Man wasn't arrested is they can't prove who the hell he was. We've shown the video. You can't tell. He had a gas mask on. That's why they haven't arrested him. But they still ran with that narrative. See, they don't like the cops with what happened with Floyd. They don't. They're going to use their words against him. But when it comes to bikers, oh, I believe the cops. Are you going to make up your mind? Really, it, it, it's like you've done some real good acid or some good shrooms. Because you in fantasy land, man. And what's worse is you got a bunch of fantasy land freaking pecker pullers who follow you. It's funny. Everybody knows I'm a big union guy. You know, my family is coal miner unions, freaking steel worker unions, uh, hardcore stuff, man, iron workers. And it's funny when people attack them. Most people don't understand it's the union bosses and not the rank and file. Most of the time, they don't go with their endorsement. They'll freaking vote on their own. But anyway, in the Iron Belt up in Minnesota... You actually had freaking Democratic freaking union people say, ah, no, we're going to support this guy because you guys are a bunch of liars. And one thing that is scary about all this, this guy is just a vessel that they're putting up. That's why they don't want him to debate. He's a vessel who's going to sell, sell us right back out to China. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, our trade deal sucked. It sucked. And they, our jobs were put overseas. Now that they're coming back, you want these Beltway elites? Really? Camilla Harris? Come on. Really? And by the way, she ain't black. Nope. She's of Indian descent. She's not a blackie. I'm sorry to say that. And I will point that out. But she put more people in jail for marijuana than anybody else around on the West Coast. And she laughed about doing it. That's one thing that I always ask a black person when I talk to them. Why do you let the chain stay on with these people? Can't you see what they've done to you? That party is responsible for the freaking Civil War the Jim Crow laws, and it was actually the GOP that started the civil rights stuff, but again, you hijacked it, like you do everything. I think I'm really going off on this because I'm pissed off that they put bikers in a right-wing group. After all that we do for the community, now they're bashing on us. All the progress that's been made, they continue to bash on us. But hey, I tell the younger ones, eh, now you're starting to get a little taste of what it used to be in the old days. You know, everybody calls me a dinosaur the way I think, but you're getting that taste, baby. You're getting the taste about what is going on here. So, that is the show for today. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Really appreciate all the chats that we have on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, the voicemails that are left on, uh, you know, the studio phone, even though some are pricks. Somebody from Boston's a big prick. 
talk shit all the time, man. It's funny as hell. Can't understand the guy who wants to talk like an asshole. Uh, but anyway, don't forget uh, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify. It's called uh, Apple Podcasts now. My fault. Google Play, you're loving it. Don't forget, pound rock on. I'll talk to you later, you hooligans. Have a good one. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, Motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community. Motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!